After Zolf's little episode, Kit sets off in search of shards. First stop, Jaws and Bog. You'll get lost in that bog, I told the kid, and I won't be able to guide you back. Well, I let him go. What else could I do? What could any of us do? Zolf put us in a real bind. Hurt the bastion bad. But the shards can make it better. They're like smaller doses of the core's medicine. Shame the only place to fill that prescription is out here in the wilds. This place is intoxicating. Now the kids see something stranger still. Did anybody else survive? Sure enough, he finds. Peckers, lunkheads, wallflowers, pin cushions, vine apples, swamp weeds, ankle gators.
even farther into the wild unknown. Kid sets foot inside one of Ceylandia's famous watering holes. He has the nerve to flash the shield he stole. He's a petty thief. The security's just meant to straighten him out. Sees what's left of the rippling walls. Years of work undone in an instant. He sees what's left of Pith, the bull. The gods, they're all undone. He sees what's left of his lifelong friend. His friend, he's come undone too. Shard ain't lost either. Not anymore. Now to find a ticket out of this hole. Bootlickers dig their nasty thorns into his heels.
They say one whiff of blood blossom can make you lose your mind. Well, the kid prunes it down to size somehow. Mother only knows what happened in the bog. Kid never much cared to speak of it. A shard is like a poor man's core, but beggars can't be choosers. That's it. A few more shards like that, and we'll be back in business. A single shard can breathe new life into this place. The shard's got enough juice to spruce up any of these places. Just the occasion to crack open the distillery's private reserve. Life wine so rich, they say it's brought men back from the brink for one last taste. What else is there to say? He ain't all that shy. Takes a lot of moving pieces to make a dependable sidearm. The little Zolwood oil on that blade shines like a light. Points just don't get any sharper than that. City tried to use the shards to stake out the wild. So much for that plan. Rothus Lagoon. Even the brushes stopped going there. Didn't like being eaten. Ankle gators used to roam the wilds, and they nested at Rothus Lagoon. Many a tale folks used to scare their children straight originated here.
the city's brushes knew their way around the lagoon. These beasts, they don't like company. Even the brushers learn to fear this place. They used to think that ankle gators were extinct. Well, they ain't. One of them's been living in the tall grass. They called her Queen Anne. The lagoon's got plenty of other dangers, of course. Turns out Queen Anne got a hold of a shard. Ankle gators love shiny things. Know what smells worse than an ankle gator's breath? A stink weed. Ain't time for pecker hunting, but the kid can't resist. Can't fight Queen Anne without the proper tools. The brushers use their pikes to keep their distance around here. Now the kid can do the same. Sharp sticks make Queen Anne nervous, so she backs off a bit. Those pin cushions been living off the ankle gator scraps. <laughs> Queen Anne can't fit down some of these narrow paths.
Queenie leads the kid into some kind of twisted trap. One bad step in that tall grass and he's Queen Anne's lunch. He holds his ground. Seems the Queen's running out of options. Still no sign of the shark. Closer you get to an ankle gator's lair, the thicker the tall grass grows. Kids gotta make a run for it. They say you can't hurt an ankle gator unless it's raining. And it ain't raining. That old gator's right on his tail. Gators don't much care for their young. That's why there ain't many around. Wanna know how to find an ankle gator lair? You use a kid as bait. Now she's coming for him. She's got nowhere else to go. They say if you run across an ankle gator, you better keep running. She started to get annoyed. sitting in plain view. He's 
got it, and he's home free. It's done what needed to be done. 